Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Unconventional Attorney Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Small, and I am the Unconventional Attorney. And I just had to do something that I never, I don't often do, and that is re-record that intro because I messed it up so terribly bad the first time that uh, that I had to redo it. So, you know, I tell people that I never do a second take. That's not true. Sometimes I do just do so bad, I mess up so bad. If it's not live, I'm like, F it, we're starting over. Uh, but not anymore, not at this point, obviously. So we're, we're already far enough in that if I totally jacked it up right now, i probably just keep going. Um, so anyway, welcome to the show. Thank you, all, as always, for being here. Uh, before we get into all the all the fun content, the cool stuff that we're talking about today, some super exciting and and um, something that I've been working on with my own with my own self. Um, I want to remind you that this show is free. You don't have to pay uh, to listen. Uh, the knowledge that I'm providing you hopefully is very helpful and is is helping you make uh, more money with your firm. Hoping hopefully helping you become a better person, helping you. Um, just live a better life because that's that's what all this is all about, right? It's taking the unconventional route, doing the unconventional thing, and doing the thing that that um, helps you uh, sort of become your best person and live your best life, which is different than than anyone else's. And uh, the only the only payment that I ask for, the only thing that I ask for in, in return is is um, that you do two things really, that you really do one thing is what I really really would love. That is to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Um, subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. They come out on Mondays and Thursdays. You just don't want to miss them. Uh, they'll pop right up in your little podcast app. And then the rate and review just helps other people find this podcast, and and it helps uh, me get the exposure. That helps me get good guests. It's like a it's like a this this hamster wheel that we need to be on, and we got to keep running. So if you have not left a review yet, please do so. The other thing too is. Every time I get 25 new reviews, I'm giving away uh, 10 my most 10 influential books. If you want a chance to be able to do that, then then um, you know just leave a review. Once you're in, you're in the whole time. So uh, I think we're on 56 right now. I just did two drawings last week, and we need more reviews. When we get to 75, we'll do another one. So so please get out there and do that. The other thing too is if you if you know if you are friends with a law firm owner that's struggling or that isn't that you think might benefit from this. Maybe just uh, shoot him a quick text and say, hey, go check out the Unconventional Attorney Podcast. It's cool. It might help you. If you like it, that's great. If you don't, that's okay too. But, um, you know, let's get the word out to, to our fellow attorneys. You know, I do this show because I, I, I feel like I'm kind of a weirdo when it comes to business, marketing, advertising, branding, systems. And I like to share this information with you. I know how hard it can be to be a law firm owner. I know how much other crap is out there that people are throwing around. And... You know, for us to not share this with our other fellow law firm owners, it's kind of unfair. We're doing a disservice. It's not in the spirit of the show. It's not in the spirit of life. It's karmic. So get out there. Um, if you know somebody that that might benefit from this, then just uh, you know, let them know about it. All right. Okay, that's it. Now for the good stuff, for the meat. Today I'm going to talk about. It's kind of a book review. It's kind of not, but but it's this concept of bumpers. Okay. And uh, if you follow me on Instagram at the Christopher Small, uh, last week I went to Kansas City for a few days, and in my Instagram story I took a couple of pictures um, of the things that I was reading. I was reading the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Actually, I got it right here. If you're watching on video, I read um, this book, and then I also showed a picture of this, which is bumpers. Okay, bumpers is a is a. Um, uh, it was like a 35-page sort of ebook that was written by one of my one of my friends, sort of one of my um, what's it, business colleagues. His name is Nick Peterson. He is kind of the organizer of a mastermind group that I'm a part of. Really, really smart guy. Really successful. Does a lot of deep thinking. You know, if you guys think I'm I'm sort of deep and woo-woo, he is is takes it to another level in a good way. And he wrote this little ebook called Bumpers. And uh, finally, I actually didn't even get a chance to read it in Kansas City. I finally got a chance to read it yesterday. And uh, it was profound, okay, quite frankly. And it was great. And it's something I'm implementing with my own, with myself. It's something I've kind of done um, outside of this, this book. And it's something I've been talking about for a long time. But he laid out, lays out a really great framework, a really easy way to put it together. And so I thought we would just run through it today. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I'm doing it. And then, um, 
you know, just go from there. So um, this is one that you're definitely going to want to take out some notes for, pad and paper, pencil. Um, it's something actually that I'm going to be probably deep diving on at the at my Inner Circle Live event, which is on June 28th in Kansas City. If you are not an Inner Circle member and you think you might want to be, go to uh, circleofsmall.com and you can learn a little bit about that. Um, it's a members only invite. Um, it's fun. We do it every quarter. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, you have to pay. It's 500 bucks to come. That just covers all the costs of things that I do. Like I, I, I throw a happy hour. I do a bunch of cool stuff. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about bumpers, okay? Um, by the way, um, please go follow Nick Peterson. N I C P E T E R S O N. He runs a, something called Mastery Mode and some other stuff. Big muscular dude. Um, uh, um, so handsome, handsome fella. So go find him. I'll put a link in the show notes to his Facebook page, probably maybe to his. Uh, there's a group that he has called Profit and Control Freedom, Profit Freedom Control, or something like that. Uh, I'm I'm in the group. I just I should have looked it up before I got in here. But um, I'll put a couple of links to those in the show notes. So if you're listening to this uh, or watching this on YouTube, it'll, it'll, that information will be in there. Okay. Um, but please go go check him out. He's got he's got cool stuff. He's a good guy. He he really really knows what he's doing. He taught me a lot, and um, so I'm excited to to sort of share share him with you. All right. Let's talk about this concept of bumpers. Like, what does what does bumpers even mean? And and it all starts okay with this idea, this concept that there's a gap between all the things we know we should be doing and the things we are actually doing consistently every day. And um, you know, for me, this always creates some conflict, right? Some, some disconnect, some, um, not disconnect, the right, what's what I'm looking for? Like this tension between me and myself, because I know I want to do these things. I know I should be doing them, but I'm not getting them done. I know this happens with a lot of syndicate members, with a lot of inner circle members, where you know, for example, you should be creating content every day. You should be doing a couple other things every day. And for, for whatever reason, you're just not getting them done. And, um, you know, that at the end of the day, we always talk about you know like just do it, just get it done. Um, that's one side. The other side, the other flip side that that people tend to do, especially us attorneys, is we tend to go deep on a topic, right? Um, we'll look, we'll find out all the reasons why we're doing it, right? We'll find out how we're doing it. We'll research strategies um, for overcoming it and beating it, for getting it all done. But what really ends up happening for us is is two things: a Often the things that we aren't doing are the things that are, are either slightly uncomfortable or things that we maybe we don't completely want to do all the way. Um, so what these things do, what this research does, what this what this strategizing does, what this thinking does, is it allows us to like put off doing this thing even longer and longer and longer. So um, and we feel like we're trying to solve the problem, but in reality, we are just exacerbating the problem. We are prolonging the problem. We are pushing the problem out. We also have this tendency to... Um, when it comes to these things that we know we should be doing, but we don't allow other things to creep into our day um, to take away that time that we would be doing these things. Things like emails, things like fires that we talk about, which are on, often non-existent, um, admin work, I mean, just just um, social media, just whatever you wanna say, these things often um, we allow to creep into our day and take over, and we shouldn't be doing that, okay? Um, what bumpers is, what this idea of bumpers is, is all about how to actually do more of the things that we should be doing consistently. So it's a simple thing, it's a simple concept, it's a simple idea, but when implemented can have profound effect on your day, profound effect on your week, your month, your year, your life, on everything. And essentially what we're trying to do is put on autopilot, schedule out in a way as much as we can so that a it makes our decision making process easier and b we just get more done when the thing pops up we just do it we don't ask questions we don't cry we don't complain if it's a good day we do it if it's a bad day we do it it doesn't matter what it is it gets done all right so that's that now um there's a caveat to this okay what i'm going to talk about today is going to sound great hopefully you're going to be pumped up by the time we're done that's the idea but remember there is no magic pill to you doing the things that you need to do okay at the end of the day you are in charge of actively changing your behavior in a way that will invite more favorable circumstances 
You have to decide these things are actually important to you. You have to actually do the work. I can't make you do the work. What you have to decide is, am I where I'm at right now, is this the place that I want to be? If the answer is yes, that's fine, just chill. If the answer is no, then ask yourself, what are the things that I need to do to get to where I need to go? Then you do them, then you go there, okay? No matter what, stop making excuses for yourself, stop letting yourself off the hook, stop coming up with these ridiculous rationalizations and just do the things that need to be done. That's the difference between successful and unsuccessful people. Successful people can take action, unsuccessful people are sitting on the sidelines, thinking, researching, deciding, waiting, okay? All right, brain over. Now, let's dive in to this sucker, okay? The first kind of concept that's that's outlined in this ebook that I think is really important to, to talk about and to, to um, come to grips with and to accept, or not accept, I guess, if you don't accept it, is, the, is this idea that you know, a good life lived, okay? Uh, a successful life, a life where of happiness, of, of joy, of, of fulfillment, is not necessarily one that is filled with jumping from fire to fire to fire, putting these things out, taking care of the next thing that pops up, doing the next thing that pops up, okay? Um, in fact, if you take the time to figure out what matters to you, what's important to you, what you actually want to get done, and then you take a little bit of time to actually accurately measure, manage, and appreciate those things, then you can have everything that you want. It's quite amazing. Uh, by, by implementing some of these ideas, you can eliminate fires, you can eliminate problems, you can eliminate some of those things that jump up, and you can approach every day with the sort of the, the um, tranquility, if you will, of knowing what's to come of being able to just do the things that you like to do, that you need to do, that you want to do, without having to, to have this outside pressure, this outside worry, this outside fear of like, what's coming next? What have I forgotten about? What did I miss? Okay, you don't have to do that. And Bumpers allows you to sort of create this framework to, to, to um, work within that will allow you to do that, okay? And by the way, you've probably been asking yourself like, who, what is this Bumpers thing? Like, this is ridiculous. I don't know what Bumpers are. I don't know what Bumpers means. Why are we talking about bumpers? And so I'll tell you this. I, I didn't know either as I was reading the book. And it's kind of funny. The way that Nick wrote this book, it's like a, he wrote it quick. And he put this the explanation for the bumpers like about, I don't know, about two-thirds of the way through the book. And I'm going to give it to you up here at the beginning because I think it's it helps to sort of fulfill the, the, um, the, the picture of what's going on. But he likes bowling for some reason. Okay, he's a bowler. And, 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 and the, the analogy works. And, and that might just be it. He doesn't just maybe like bowling all the time. But the idea of bumpers, right? Uh, if you ever play, if you ever gone bowling with kids, they have these bumpers that they put up over the gutters. Basically, when you throw the ball down the down the alley, it will just bounce off the bumpers on its way down to the pins. And that is what we're trying to do here with our lives, right? We're trying to create bumpers that allow us to, to continuously move forward towards our goals, to continuously move forward towards our perfect life, our perfect day, right? The things that we want. Um, and the, the what allows you to do this are these bumpers that you can create, right? It's a mechanism that allows you to automatically keep yourself moving toward that goal, okay? And the, 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 main, the big idea here to remember too is that these bumpers in our context, in the context of our world, they don't exist to protect us from the world, okay? They don't exist to protect bad things from coming in. They mostly exist, they truly exist to protect us from us. They, they provide us with a framework, an easy, um, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like a, um, gosh, uh, uh, um, a philosophy, a, a framework, an internal framework to work from that will then allow us to make decisions related to outside things very quickly, very easily, with no guilt, okay? With no, with no frustration, with no um, dissonance, right? That's what these bumpers are set up to do. Um, and because of this thing, because this is the reason why these bumpers exist, it's important then to take the next step and understand and realize and, and have a sort of a come to Jesus moment with yourself to know that if, if, 
as we go through the things that we're about to go through, if you are not honest with yourself about what you want, if you are not honest with yourself about where you want to be in life, if you are not honest with yourself about what's important to you, then these bumpers are not going to work. You are going to fall outside of these bumpers. They are, they are going to let the ball go into the gutter, Whatever, however we can further that analogy. They're not going to work because they're not going to be aligned with what you actually want. So you're going to find reasons to make them not work. Okay, so your pursuits must stay aligned with your unique disposition in your life, dreams, and goals. Does that make sense? The things that you're going after, they must align with what you actually want. It doesn't make any sense for you to work a lot, for example, if you don't care about the things that you're you're chasing. Um, it doesn't make. This is going to get real. Okay, we're about to get real, real sort of dirty here right now. It doesn't make sense for you to carve out a tremendous amount of family time if you don't want to spend a lot of time with your family. Okay, so that 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 may not uh, apply to everyone. It may not apply to anyone. That's okay. But that that I think really sort of completes this picture of what you're what you want to be doing. Don't say that you want to do things or don't say that things are important to you. Don't put things on on your calendar, which we're going to talk about, if you don't actually want to do them. Okay, this is the this is the point. All right. Now, let's get into step one. Which, which carries right off of what we've just been talking about. Step one, the whole point, the whole way we get into this is to imagine what your perfect day looks like from start to finish, okay? And again, this is not what society thinks is perfect or your friends or your colleagues or your family, okay? It's just you. Now, you may have to adjust this perfect day to fit within the norms and the, the so maybe some of the some of the walls that you've created, some of the some of the things that you've built that you can't get out of, or that are important to you, right? Family is one. Maybe some, maybe a partnership is one, something like that. Okay, you may have some limitations on your day based on these things, but I would highly, highly encourage you, for just right now, you don't have to show this to anyone. No one's ever going to see it. To imagine your perfect day from start to finish, okay, without any inside influence or any outside influence, I'm sorry. Think about what you want for sure, okay? Um, and I'll give you I'll give you an example. I'm, this is my perfect day, and I'm a weirdo, okay? So, and actually, this is a pretty perfect day, but for me, in this, we're talking about all the way, start to finish, the entire 24 hours, okay? So for me, wake up at 4.30 a.m. every day, okay? Wake up, you know, whatever, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, glass of water, 4.45 a.m., I'm traveling um, to the thing. I say traveling to the thing to be done. Okay, because um, some days that's going to be the gym, some day that's going to be like reading or thinking outside. Because I really would love to get outside, um, as long as it's like not raining on me and I'm not cold. I really like to be outside in the morning for some reason. It's kind of nice, uh, particularly when I'm reading, thinking, just the sort of the fresh air, the sounds. They, I like them. Um, I also like to go to the gym in the morning, but I don't like to go every day because this is probably a lot of information for you. Probably too much information. Because going to the gym every day for me, for some reason, actually makes me feel worse. Um, I tried it a couple times, and by like day three or day four, I'm actually more run down. I'm more tired. I'm, I'm, I'm just don't feel great. When I mix it up and just go maybe three times a week, uh, four times a week, then I feel really, really good. But I still want to wake up those other times because I love that that morning time. I like waking up early, even even though. I'm, by the way, even though I'm not a morning person, but I really like it. It makes me my day feel great. So. 5 a.m. then would be like gym or reading, thinking outside. That's an hour. 6 a.m. would be doing my morning formula, journaling, doing my Instagram post. Okay, if you guys follow me on Instagram, at the Christopher Small, every, almost every day, pretty much every day, I do a quote and I talk about the quote. Okay, it's just another creative outlet for me. Like I said, I like to talk about this stuff. I like to think about it. I like to do it. And you know, this is how I do it. 6:30 is going to be coffee and hang out. 7 a.m. is when the kids tend to wake up. So probably between 6.30 and 7, they wake up. But once they're up, then it's like get them dressed, get them breakfast, you know, hang out with them for a little bit, talk to them about their day. It's a, it's a great opportunity for me to just spend a little bit of time with them. Typically, don't turn the TV on unless it's like five minutes before we're going to leave and, they, and they're just like, they're just done. They're ready to, t to, to just veg for a second. Um, but get that kid time in, right? Get that quality family time in, hang out with them. Also, maybe have a coffee, hang out, do all that kind of stuff. About 8 o'clock. Take the kids to school, um, drop the kids off at daycare, Blake off at, at uh, elementary school. And again, I don't do this every day. Um, Allison and I, we, we sort of switch this up, but this would be my, this would be my perfect day is to do this. I wouldn't mind taking them to school every day like this. Get to work at 
from 9.30 to 5.30, I'm working. I'm doing work. By the way, you're gonna wanna include, um, when you're doing this, think about the time in the middle, like if you're gonna do lunch time, if you're gonna do, hap so what I probably would do would be like, I need to, I'm gonna adjust this on the fly. So what I probably would do, usually like around three o'clock, I'd do a coffee break with uh, my main man, Moses, accountant in my, in my building, super cool dude, owns his business, we, we have coffee and we chat, you know, it's like a nice little break. So 3 p.m. would be a coffee break for me, 5.30 work is over, six o'clock dinner with the fam play read etc that's kid time that's that's family time that's that's like that's when we we do the thing they like to play outside obviously do all these kinds of fun things eight o'clock put the kids to bed and personal time after that right then 10 30 go to bed wake up at 4 30 do it all over again right and for me that personal time might be like watching a show might be like i don't know reading reading a book some more i'm a dork okay so whatever that time is for you that's what that time looks like um so um that's that so take five minutes and plan your perfect day out don't try to overthink it but when you're putting stuff in the main question i want you to ask yourself is are these the things that i really want to do or are these the things that other people want me to do does that make sense all right good good i can see you nodding virtually even though no one can hear this yet because i'm recording it right obviously all right um Oh yeah, one caveat to this exercise, uh, and I've done this in the past and it, and it gets things a little wonky, that's why I'm making sure I put this in there. The perfect day exercise that you're doing right now, this is not like some future perfect day when you're rich AF and you don't have to do anything and you can sit on the beach, you can drink a Mai Tai and you can just chill, okay? When the kids are older or you have like a nanny and they wake up with them, they do whatever you need, you just play with them and have fun and when they get grumpy, you hand them off, like this is not, <laughs> this is not that, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about today. Your perfect day today. You still have to go to work, okay? You still gotta take care of the kids. You still have to do certain things in your life. That was the, what I was talking about earlier about those those things that you may have already created that sort of require you to do some things, okay? So you have some responsibilities um, and whether or not you wanna do those or not is fine. Something to take into account, but don't pretend um, that you are rich and that they don't exist just so you can not include them in your perfect day. Because right now, work probably exists in your perfect day. So put that in there, and it probably should anyway, because um, it, you know you're gonna have you you would have passion projects that you could pursue. You would have other things that you could do that that would fill that time. All right. Now, once you made this perfect day, right? Um, you have the choices that you want. Um, um, then, oh, okay. So sorry. Now. Now that you have this perfect day framework, things get a little bit easier for you, okay? Because now you get to make choices when people come into you from the outside world, and if it doesn't fit into your perfect day, then you're gonna say no. Okay, a perfect example from the book is if you are gonna be done with work at 5.30. For example, let's say for me, I'm gonna be done with work at 5.30 every day. Somebody comes up to me and tells me that there's a project that they want me to work on from 6.30 to eight o'clock for two months, I'm gonna have to probably tell them no because it's not gonna fit into my perfect day. It's not giving me what I want. And yeah, it may be an opportunity lost, but, but what will often happen is other opportunities will arise that will fit into your perfect day and or you're not gonna have that dissonance, that dissatisfaction from doing something over here that doesn't fit within your perfect day. All right, now that doesn't mean you, you'll always say no, maybe an opportunity pops up, but this is the framework that you wanna start making your choices from. You know, When 10.30 comes, you're going to bed, right? You're not, you're not asking questions, you're just doing it. Okay, now, that's it, we're done. Episode's over. Okay, I'm kidding. Uh, everything's not gonna be perfect after this. There's still more to do, okay? Um, this is not gonna be simple to implement. It's not gonna be easy. You're gonna, you're gonna um, have a lot of internal struggle. You're gonna have some external struggle, uh, but this is where we wanna start. This is the end goal. This is where we wanna try to be, okay? So these are the things that we wanna get to. Um, The key here, as you begin to implement this day, is to think about and approach it from the framework of today, you want to have as good a day as you can. It's not gonna be perfect. You may not stick to the schedule 100%, but what you really wanna to try to do is get today as close as you can to that day, and then tomorrow, just do the same thing. Try to get a little bit better, try to get a little bit better, a little bit better, okay? Um, win the day today. That is the ultimate goal with this framework and with everything. You should always just be trying to have your best day ever. All right, now, 
Now that we're done with this, with this framework, now we're going to take it one step further. We're going to help ourselves answer more of these questions that pop up from our outside life by determining our non-negotiables. Okay. Now that you want, now that you know what your day to look like, you know when we're out, not talking about money, we're talking about just life. Your 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 perfect day. It's time to come up um, with the non-negotiables that will help your perfect day become a reality. Some examples of this might be like I am going to attend every one of my kids' games, right? Um, it might be I'm going to be home. Uh, I'm not going to work past five o'clock ever. I'm just not going to do it. That's one of my non-negotiables. It might be I'm going to get to the gym every day. It might be I'm going to take a vacation with my spouse every quarter, right? These are the things that are non-negotiable for a week. Every quarter we're going to go away for a week. It's non-negotiable. This thing is going to happen. When you set these non-negotiables into into action, now everything can start to be crafted around that, right? You can start to work towards these non-negotiables. So what you want to do is take a moment and write these down. And when you're talking about non-negotiables, again, these need to be things, A, that are yours. They're your non-negotiables, okay? So if you don't care about going to every game for your kids, then don't write that down. You know, not everybody cares about that. And it's not the end of the world, by the way, if you go or not. Stop worrying about people judging you and just start doing you, okay? Trust me, it's all going to work out. So write those things down, okay? Try to come up with maybe like two, three, four that, that fit your, your world, all right? You want to know what mine are? I will share them with you. They're a little bit uh, more woo-woo than that. I stole a couple of these from Nick's book because they really fit what I wanted to do. Uh, and uh, by the way, if you want to get that book, I don't even know if you can get it. I think it's kind of private. He's going to be releasing it, I think, maybe. Uh, but again, go check him out anyway. Okay, so here are my non-negotiables. Uh, basically, I'm not going to compromise my goals or values to make someone else feel good or better. Okay. I have a unique approach to life. If you guys couldn't tell, I kind of have a unique, unique approach to everything. And what I've found is that it's really, it's really not good for anyone, for me or for the people around me, if I am compromising on the things that I find important. Okay, I, I uh, not to get into too much detail, but my number one goal is to really treat everyone with respect, treat everyone nicely, but also to not, you know. Um, Ah, that's hard to explain. I'm going to be me, basically. Okay. Um, number two is to not negotiate with myself. What this really means is to stop or not make plans, not stop, to just not make plans, not make promises that you are not going to be able to keep. So on the flip side of that, only make promises that you are 100% committed to keeping no matter what. When someone that, So what this makes it easier for you to do is to say no. Basically, when someone asks you to do something, if you don't have the time for it, if you don't have the, the, the bandwidth, then you're going to just say no. I'll give you a perfect example. My paralegal has this business idea and she wants to talk to me about it and she wants to see if I wanted to get involved in it with her. And I, what I told her was, I don't, I, uh, I'm not, this has no reflection on the, the, like the, the greatness or lack of greatness of your idea, but I'm not interested. I don't have the time for it. I don't have the bandwidth. Um, I have too many other things going on. I have these priorities over here. I can't do it. Okay? I have other things that are that are the same way where I'll just say, look, I can't do that. I'm sorry, I don't have the time. I can't I had a, another perfect example. I had a buddy of mine that's a real estate agent call me up and want me to get um start this mastermind group with him. Start this this um it's it's bigger than that, but basically it's a mastermind group with some of the concepts involved. And he wanted to see if I wanted to go in on it like as a business partner with him. And it was it was a good idea. I, I could see the benefit of it, but I had to tell him, like, look, unfortunately I have to say no because I don't have the time to devote to this project that I would need to divide and I don't want to lie to you and tell you yes now and have you be disappointed later and have me dis be disappointed later. So for me, this is one of my non-negotiables is not making promises that I can't keep, not negotiating with myself, okay? And then number three is no judging people or trying to be right or win an argument, all right? Um, I, I, this, is, this one is actually relatively easy for me to do because it's sort of just part of my nature. Uh, I, I bring it to my estate planning practice all the time. I always tell people, I don't care what you do. You tell me what you want. I'll tell you the, up, the upside and the downside of it. And if you want to do it, I'll do it for you. I don't care. Some people came in the other day. They just want to talk about how to take care of their cats. 
I'm like, look, if your cats are important to you, let's do this. I don't care. I ain't laughing at you for liking your cats. You can do whatever you want. If you want to cut your kids out, that's fine. I don't care because it's not my money. It's not my family. It's not my values. I'm not trying to promote my stuff to you. So it's not my place to judge what's right or wrong for anybody else. I hope to not be judged in that same way. And uh, for that reason, I'm also not often trying to win an argument. I will get into a, uh, by the way, side note on this one in case you ever are wondering, like, that's not true, Chris. I see you get into um, arguments all the time. There's a difference between the, 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 the argument when we're talking about uh, competing ideas and discussing those ideas, sometimes discussing those ideas in a way that is um, um, energetic, <laughs> I guess I would say. But I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not trying to prove anybody right. I like to just talk about deep concepts. And when we're talking about deep concepts, then I, I can get excited about them. Particularly if we're talking about business, we're talking about business, idea, business ideas. If I think people have the stomach for politics or religion, I will get into it with them and talk to them about it. Uh, because for me, again, with these types of things, I'm not trying to win necessarily. I'm trying to probe. I'm trying to um, to think. I'm trying to to um, expand my own horizons. I'm trying to I'm trying to see the other side. And uh, those things are interesting to me. So um, this is that's a super tangent on this thing. Doesn't really matter. But those are kind of my non-negotiables. Okay. Um, I want you to come up with your own non-negotiables, write those down, and then stick to them. Okay, Put them somewhere, look at them every day, make sure that you know what they are so that when things arise, you can make choices based on those decisions. It makes it way easier to just say, look, and, and it makes you super consistent too, to say, look, I don't, look, I got my, my kids got a game, I don't miss a game, so I just can't do this. I'm sorry. It's a non-negotiable for me. And people will typically be like, okay, I get that. That's cool. Okay. Okay, now that we have these non-negotiables, now it's time to create your bumpers, literally, okay? So the easiest way to do this is to um, look back at your past week and put everything in buckets according to the time spent for the entire week, okay? So you wanna just fill this whole time up. Um, the, the buckets that will probably be the easiest to fill are gonna be work, sleep, eating, family time, okay? If you have other buckets, then you can create them. I wouldn't get, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, overplayed this too much have big general buckets you'll see we can fill these out in different ways over over um, once you get them done so um, but what you want to do is like on Monday I spent eight hours working on Tuesday I spent six hours working on Wednesday I spent seven hours working blah 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 okay you want to have a total of 168 hours when you're done seven days 24 hours 168 hours now once you have all these buckets and all these days, right? The easiest thing to do is just go look at the last week of your calendar or maybe the last two weeks of your calendar and kind of average them out and see what's going on. But now you're gonna average out each of those buckets into time spent per day. So if you spent, let's make this easy. If you spent um, 40 hours, uh, this is easy. For example, if you spent 40 hours working and you're only going to work Monday through Friday, then that would obviously be eight hours working a day. Maybe one day it was 10, maybe one day it was six, maybe one day it was 10, maybe one day it was 10, whatever. Maybe one day it was 13, I don't know. I'm terrible at math, guys. Just make it add up to 40. But that's, you're gonna get eight, right? If you spend, you know, um, five hours, uh, seven hours on lunch, or on, then you're gonna have an hour lunch a day. Does that make sense? So what you really wanna do is just figure out what are these buckets averaging out per day um, of the days that you have them, okay? Um, okay, now that you've done this, now that you have your averages, here comes the hard part, the part they're gonna be like, no, I can't, I just can't do this, it's not gonna work, I, I can't do it, it won't, it's no good. You're gonna take these averages and you're gonna put them literally into your calendar, okay? So with the, aver with the example that I just gave, if you're working 40 hours a week, but you're going 10, 10, 10, 10, instead of doing that, if you're doing five hours a day or five days a week, make eight hours so block off eight hours when do you want to work for me it would be 9 30 to 4 30 right if i was doing an eight hour day 9 30 to 4 30 be blocked off block that off every day if you're going to eat lunch eat lunch every day at the same time noon 12 to 12 30 put that in there okay and then you're going to obviously you're going to have to push your work time down just a little bit um so you'd be working till 5 9 30 to 5 instead of that um if you have family time for me like my family time 6 p.m to 8 p.m Put that family time in there. Put it in your calendar. Family time, right? Uh, when I wake up, put that wake up time in there. Uh, morning formula, put that time in there. Put it in there and and, crawl, and just fill your whole calendar up when you're sleeping. Put that sleeping in there. Fill it all the way in, all right? 
Um, so just do that, by the way. Just try it. It's not. It's going to take you five seconds because you can just repeat it every day. All right. What I would do for the work time, by the way, when you put that work time in, make it as a free on your calendar so you can see it. But people, things can get scheduled inside of there because obviously you're going to have meetings. You're going to be doing stuff in there. You want to do that. Same with the family time. Same with the um, whatever else time you have that you might that you might fill in there. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. That the reason why you want to do this is because this is called the the twenty mile march concept, and I'm I think I'm going to do an entire podcast episode just on this concept, and it's the idea that you have the greatest chance for success if you have consistent action over a very very long period of time. What that means is instead of going 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 with your work and then taking three days off, going eight 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 five days is going to give you more more time. Okay, instead of trying to pack it all in, instead of doing things only when you feel good and not doing them when you feel bad, um, you're going to have a greater consistency over time. You're going to have more success faster, and it's going to be more sustainable over time, and you're going to be happier. So just trust me on this and spread that out over that whole week. Okay, If you're used to like getting all the kid time in, in one day, see if you can find a way to spread that all the way out. I think you're gonna you're gonna like that better. And even if Saturdays are all for kids, that's fine. Put that in there still, um, but just make all that time work out. All right. Um, the key is you want to have a system set up so that when you feel bad, the things still get done. When you feel good, the things still get done. But when you feel good, you don't necessarily have to do more. When you're done, you're done. You get to enjoy the day. You get to do the thing that you want to do. You get to have that fun, right? And and with those good days. You don't do more unless you're willing to add more to those shitty days, okay? Your crappy days. If you can do more in your crappy days and more in your good days, then fine, add it in there. But if you don't, then don't, okay? And don't adjust it, okay? Start out with just this um, framework and try this out for like a week at least, maybe two weeks. I would spread it, I would try it out for at least one week and see what happens, okay? Um, here's how you, I would build out the calendar. Sleep goes in first, then work, then eating, then family time, then the rest, if you have white space, is gonna be free time for you to fill up however you want. So for example, if you are gonna do, to use the work thing, right, if you work five days a week from eight to five, then Saturday and Sunday are gonna be open. That's just gonna be free time that you can fill up. You know, if you, I don't know, if you have eight to five, but you don't have any work to do, that's also gonna be open space as you get into those days, okay? Um, the only thing I put in extra, to, to sort of take this one step further is uh, like for me if there are work activities that I know I'm going to do then I put those in okay so for example I'm doing a Facebook live every day for unconventional attorney and I'm doing a Facebook live every day for CMS law firm so I'm gonna build those in somewhere half hour here half hour there for each of those I'm gonna put those inside of the work so that I make sure they get done so if there are any tasks inside of your big tasks that you want to get done put those in the calendar okay Hopefully that makes sense. And then here's the key. This is the key to all of this. And and if you can get yourself into this framework and start doing this, it will you will win. The key is when the time comes up, when the thing pops up, you do the thing. At 10:30, you go to bed. At 4:30, you wake up. At five o'clock, you're at the gym. Okay, you don't mess around with this. When it's time for the Facebook Live, you do the Facebook Live. Obviously, I'm talking about my calendar because I don't know what your calendar looks like. But those are things that you do. When it's time to go home, you go home. Okay? You don't you don't push through. You don't you don't try to try to kill yourself. You let this long term sustainability take over. Okay? You do those things. Um, it will make you the most productive that you've ever been. Um, and it, because what will happen is even if you don't consciously do anything, you're still doing things throughout the day because they're on your calendar. You're still going to the gym. You're still doing your reading. You're still take playing with the kids. Right? Still doing these things that you that you know um, you should be doing. Right? When, it, when, it's, when you're feeling great, it's super easy. When you feel bad, it sucks, but it gets done nevertheless. Okay? It's going to be super productive. It's going to be amazing. Okay? The next step in this, in this whole scenario is, like I said, put this in. Don't change it. Don't update it. Just try it for a week. Once a week goes by, then you can look and you can adjust if you need to. Okay? So like, um, this is what I thought my perfect day was, but in actuality, I need an extra hour of sleep. So what you do is you add an extra hour of sleep in, and then you'll move your other things around to fit that in. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. 
Uh, but basically, you're going to make these tiny adjustments over time to really try to find your perfect day. Maybe instead of going to work at 9.30, your perfect time is at 10.30, and you're going to work a little bit later, but that gives you some time in the morning to do something else that you really want to do. Then that's what you're going to work out. Okay, but you're trying to figure out this perfect day. But you're going to make tiny tweaks a little bit at a time. So once you make a choice, let it, that sit for another week, or go a week, and then see again what, what's going on. Don't, make, don't keep making chases, cho- changes in, in week. Give yourself time for those things to set in so you can see if you actually like them. Because at the beginning, you're going to feel resistance. You're going to feel like, I don't want to do this. This sucks. It's different. I'm not comfortable. And you're not going to want to do it. Give it a chance. Okay? If you do, this is where the magic happens. Right? Guilt. Shame. That uneasiness of the unknown. It all disappears. You wondering what's next. You thinking about, gosh, what do I have to do tomorrow? All of that goes away. As long as you stay inside of the bumpers that you create for yourself, everything is magical. Okay? Well, it's, it'll be magical most of the time. It's not always magical. It can't be. Okay? So, as I leave you, as we wrap up this episode, I want to just implore you to just give this a shot. If, if you couldn't tell, it's a super simple system. It's something that's very, very easy to do. Um, in the, um, in the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Darn it. Um, oh, God. What's that book called? I got the book. Oh, Slight Edge. The slight edge though, this is simple to do, it's simple not to do. A couple of you are gonna do it and you're gonna see profound changes. Most of you are not, that's okay. Come back and listen to this later and get it done later, okay? Before I leave with you, I have two warnings, two, two things that I want you to keep in mind as you um, take on this journey. Thing number one is, when you do this, okay, when you make these big changes to your schedule, to your life, to the way that you operate, the people in your life are going to think you are crazy. They're going to be discombobulated. They're going to be disconcerted. They're going to be um, um, concerned. They're going to feel um, weird. You have to talk to them about what you're doing. You have to talk to them about why you're doing it. You have to talk to them about everything until they understand or until they're at least willing to give it a shot. Okay? Um, Because the people that are closest to you, your family, your kids, your spouse, the ones that are in your schedule, they are going to be um, weirded out by this. They're going to notice that something is different. So you have to talk to them. Okay. Um, you know, you have to talk them into giving it a shot to, to, to having their own flexibility and maybe even by honestly thinking about adopting this in their own life. This thing doesn't just apply if you own a business. Um, it applies everywhere. You know, you can put this into your, into your, into your life. Uh, figure out what your non-negotiables are. Figure out what your perfect day looks like and start to implement this. It may be a great time to sit down with your spouse and talk to them about how they could do this too and how you guys could formulate your own uh, perfect days together. That'd be kind of nice. Um, the second thing is, it's really important when you do this to, to, to do your best to get rid of arbitrary goals and timelines. Uh, make an X money by X date, right? Losing X pounds by X date. The goal should really be at all times to win today. That's it. Like there's this Napoleon Hill quote that's like, um, success is the pursuit um, of a of a of a good goal or something like. This is a, I just I just butchered that quote, but it's something like that, and that's the truth. The, the, when you can boil down um, what success looks like to you to winning each day in the pursuit of your goals, then everything is going to fall into place. You're going to feel so much better. You're going to hit those revenue targets. Um, and you're going to hit those, those things that you want to do, but they won't be the focus. And every day won't be looking at the bank account to see how many people signed up today. How many leads did you get today? It will be, did I create that content today? Did I wake up on time today? Did I get to the gym? Did I make the fall, phone calls that I need to make? Right? This is where success comes into play. All right? So do your best to try to get rid of those arbitrary goals. You can have them out there and know where you want to be and know when what success is going to feel like and what it's going to look like. But in the daily, you have to have a set of things that you're just trying to get done today, and that is how you're going to how you're going to measure your success. All right, that's it. Before we leave, I want to remind you: if you thought this was a deep dive, there's a whole deeper deeper way to do this. To put it into practice, to answer questions, to think about this in a way that actually implements it, to put it in your calendar. If you're interested in doing that, come to my Ernest, uh, Inner Circle live event, June 28th in Kansas City. Um, if you are an Inner Circle member, you're invited. If you are not, you can become an Inner Circle member and then you can come. Okay? Um, so 
we do these meetings every quarter. We do fun things like this every quarter. So if you're not an Inner Circle member and you think you might want to be, circleofsmall.com is the place to go. Circleofsmall.com. You can also shoot me a message anytime and ask me what's going on, and I will talk to you. All right? So that is it. Remember, if you enjoy this podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review. It would be super, super helpful to me, and uh, that way you don't miss any of this cool, fun content. Okay? So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for, for hanging on. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully this was informative. If it was, then um, then great. If it wasn't, then sorry. We'll be back again on Thursday, and we'll do something different. Okay? So have a great day, a great week, a great quarter, a great year, a great life. And I will talk to you again on Thursday. See ya.